It was the first ever night race in ATV Pro Motocross, and the spotlight shined brightly on defending series champ John Natale, who dominated the proceedings and moved back into championship contention. And this weekend, Natale is coming home. Welcome to Racer TV's continuing coverage of the AMA Pro ATV Motocross Championship. Jason Wigand, your host here on NBC Sports, and we are at one of the all-time great stops in all of motocross, High Point Raceway in Mount Morris, Pennsylvania. Today, the best four-wheeled ATV pilots do battle where the best two-wheeled racers did just a few weeks ago. This MotoWorks Can-Am team, John Natale and Joel Hedrick rallying as of late. The Yamaha boys here, Chad Weenan, Thomas Brown, they need to get their A game back on today. They look fired up, ready to do it. And you can't count out the number 20, the Baldwin Motorsports Honda of Josh Upperman. Bikes are prepped. Riders are ready to head down to the starting line area. And this is where they start getting nervous because so much is on the line. Points will be paid in two motos today toward the coveted 2012 AMA Pro ATV Motocross Championship. Now, Chad Weenan on the Yamaha is your points leader so far. We're going to give you a season review and show you how we got here to High Point. Started the season at Ionia Pass in Washington, Georgia, a very technical yet fast racetrack. Upperman was your first leader of the season after grabbing the hole shot. Hetrick, the young kid, was down early, not the way he wanted to start the season. Soon it will boil down to a fantastic battle between Natalie, last year's champ, and Weenan, the man who wants it this year. Weenan gets his Yamaha in front of the Can-Am to take the overall win. Next up, Muddy Creek in Tennessee. Another great start for Upperman and another strong charge by Natale and Weenan. And even in the mud and the rain, they duped it out just like it was perfect conditions. Weenan wins it in Moto 1. And the weather was a little bit better in Moto number 2, but the results were not much different. Weenan able to put his Yamaha into the number 1 position and take another Moto win. The momentum continued for the Yamaha man out of Illinois at the next race at Bud's Creek. Despite heavy pressure, he would win the first moto. But finally, a chink in the armor in moto number two. Weenan would overjump a jump and tweak his wrist, opening the door for the young Can-Am kid on the 88. Joel Hetrick to take the overall victory and snap Weenan's win streak. Ah, but a perfect chance for Weenan to recover. The next race, Sunset Ridge in his home state. And he dominated moto number one. Challenge was on, though, in moto two. The riders to battle with early. He got to the number one spot, but here comes Natale. Not afraid of winning at all. Going after him down the stretch. It would result in one of the closest finishes of the year. Here's the checkers. Winning just edging Natale for the overall win. And then last week, under the lights at Balance Motocross in Kentucky, Natale out front early and was eventually able to pull away from Winning and win the first moto. Moto number two. Under the lights, Natalie would deal with heavy pressure this time from his teammate Hedrick and hold on to win it. And that puts Natalie just 15 points back of Weenan here at the halfway mark of the 2012 season. And what a pivotal race this high point one will be. A couple of riders taken to the track on their parade lap. This course, technical not because of the jumps or the whoops or the bumps, but because of the corners. Laid out in the valley, a lot of the turns here are off camber where the track actually leans away from the machine in the corners. Natale there obviously knows how to handle it well. He collected the Fast Qualifier Award from ATVRiders.com earlier today. There's Weenan and Upperman trying to pick the right gate, trying to figure out the right race strategy. Weenan staying focused, got the headphones on. He knows that Natale is coming for him. This is usually where the Ironman rallies. This is his home state track. He does have the Fast Qualifier Award going to be a big race today. It looks like the starting line area is about to be cleared. Mechanics doing their last prep. Most of the riders about to pull back into the gates and we are set to go racing at High Point Raceway here on the NBC Sports Network. Uphill start here at High Point. The Can-Ams handle it best. They get out 1-2. SSI decals whole shot award for Natalie. We mentioned the momentum for him coming into this one, and it continues here as he leads early. Now check this out, one of the new sections of the track. 
big uphill jumps. Everyone trying to keep the machines close to the ground. But look at Hetrick in the number two spot trying to get around his teammate Natalie immediately as they weave their way down the hills. And that's the key to this track. You're always going up or down. Even when you're going sideways, there's still a bit of a tilt to it. Wait a minute, someone still down in turn one. And that is Josh Upperman on that Baldwin Honda. Very rare to see this. Normally, the whole shot artist. Instead, he is down. We've got the helmet cam footage. Let's see what happened. Thanks to GoPro there. He's battling it out with Wienan there coming together. And Wienan gets stuck in the first turn as well. They have to get off the machines. So that's going to put your series points leader in the back of the pack as well. This is the shakeup that the Moto Works Can-Am team was looking for, and they're taking full advantage. Natalie leading as they come uphill, but look at his young teammate, Hetrick, all over him right now. And you got Thomas Brown on the T-Brown Yamaha in the number three spot, and he is putting heat on. Uphill triple, and all three of these riders negotiated together. Hetrick to the inside, takes the lead early. Stay with us. Racer TV is brought to you by Can-Am and by Amsoil. Fantastic racing underway here. It's Racer TV's coverage of the AMA Pro ATV Motocross Championship from High Point Raceway. And the kid out of Seneca, Pennsylvania is leading in front of his home state fans, Joel Hetrick forced his way to the number one spot early and has put big distance on John Natale and Thomas Brown who are raging here for the number two spot and Brown makes the move. Now Natale back to the inside. That's the famous billboard corner. Lots of passes have been made over the years in that section. Today, no exception. Natale able to steal second back from Brown. Now Brown, he knows what he needs to do. If he wants to help his fellow Yamaha rider, Chad Wienan, as far as series points are concerned, he needs to finish this one in front of Natale, and he's trying everything to put his blue machine in that position. And there is Wienan, unbelievable, up to the number four spot. And earlier in this race, he was down and off of his machine in the first turn. And suddenly now, this is Hetrick, who was leading, and the report is he had to stop in the pit area for some sort of mechanical adjustment. Had a problem, they had to fix it. You don't see that very often in a motocross race. So suddenly Natale and Brown find themselves one and two. A lap ago in this very turn, Natale was pushed back to the number three spot and now he's in the lead. But look at the style of Wienan who's up to third in front of Hedrick. Hedrick throwing that machine sideways. A Little bit of a scrub there on four wheels. We'll see if the kid has time to maybe track Wienan down. So it has been a race of attrition today, today so far. Nick DeNoble just came through on a Honda. There is Upperman, who is also in that first turn crash with Wienan. And you can see how hard he's pushing. It was up on two wheels on that corner. Back to the lead pack. It's still Natalie leading the way. Brown gunning for his first moto win of the year. And Wienan closing the gap. A 150.3 lap for Wienan. That's the fastest of the moto, but everyone else has stepped up. You see Hedger coming through here in fourth. Natale was running 152s, but he has dropped into the 150s as well to try to weather this storm from Thomas Brown, who has been right there this entire race. This is where they crossed up earlier. And there's Wienan in some of the long sections of this very big racetrack. I believe he could probably steal a glance at the leaders, mark himself, and see how much ground he has to make up. But this is where Natale excels. It's not always about having the fastest lap, it's about withstanding the pressure. And with two laps to go, you can bet Brown's applying it. Here comes Wienan, but Natale very rarely makes mistakes when the other riders are breathing down his neck. He's been at this game so long won the title in this series for the first time back in 2005. So he has been through the wars, he's been through the battles, and you can see here late in the game, beginning to put some distance between himself and Brown, but there is some lap traffic to contend with. So we'll see how well Natale deals with that. Big downhill section here, you gotta be hard on the brakes, and then one of those off-camber right-hand turns. The track leans to the left while you're turning to the right. And Natale seems to have found his groove late in this one. 
and Weenan's charge from third, and Hedrick's charge in fourth. I believe they have stalled. It's about as far as they're going to be able to go. It's down in Natalie versus Brown, and Natalie has extended it just a bit. White flag is now out. And Brown going back up to the 152 lap times, while Weenan maintains the 150s at a 151 for Natalie. So Natalie getting away and Weenan closing on Brown. I don't think there's enough time for any changes to be made in the running order. But if you're Hetrick, if you're Weenan, you're Upperman, you've got to figure better things are going to happen in moto number two. They've all had their share of problems. And through it all, Natalie, the very consistent veteran, looking to follow up that ATVRiders.com fast qualifying award with a moto win here at High Point as he heads into the right hand off camber for the last time in this first moto. But you've got to win two of them here in ATV Motocross if you want to make up maximum points. And that's what Natalie's working on. He wins moto number one. Great run by Brown, second, and through traffic. Weenan, Hetrick, Upperman still finish inside the top five. We'll be back with Moto2. Racer TV is brought to you by Can-Am and by Amsoil. Got an upcoming event that the Racer TV cameras will be focused on. Maybe you can join us live in person. November 3rd and 4th, it's the grand finale of the Can-Am Grand National Cross Country Racing Series. We'll take four-wheeled ATVs and UTVs of all kinds and set them loose in the woods just outside of Nashville. Hope to see you there, either as a racer or a spectator. Now back to the motocross scene here at High Point. John Natale, there he is, one moto number one. Made up five points on Chad Weenan in this series. Now down by just 10 heading into moto two. Weenan needs to respond here. It was a first turn crash. It actually cost Weenan and Josh Upperman dearly. They were able to fight back and finish inside the top five. There's Upperman on the number 20. You know they expect better starts in this one. Upperman, I'll say the best starter in the game. Expect him to be up front this time as the gate is about to drop in moto number two. And no surprise, Upperman answers back with the SSI decals whole shot award here in moto number two. And the chase is on here at High Point. Natalie and Wien in second and third. It's the kind of showdown the fans here in Pennsylvania were hoping to see. Upperman so experienced running this point position, but the championship intensity, you've got to figure that the two riders behind him, Natalie and Wien are going to push it. And I believe that's Hetrick in the number four position. Remember, Hetrick led motor number one early for having some mechanical problems. And he's trying to work his way back into contention. This is the perfect scenario for moto two. Uphill triple. And all four, five riders actually with Brown and the Yamaha busted out. And I think Brown might have made the pass. No, in fact, Hetrick has gotten around Weenan up to the number three spot and is going after Natalie. Upperman trying to get away. Uphill triple. Everyone doubling here. No, Hedrick trying to come back. Weenan and Hedrick have passed each other back and forth already. Just two laps into this race. Upperman continues to lead. Natalie is still second. And let's see this battle for third. Hedrick has put it back in front of Weenan. The kid is determined. He's fired up. He's going after Natalie again for the number two spot. And I don't think he's going to want to stop there. You figure they're going to want to go after Upperman. Where is the Honda man? Oh, Upperman has gone off the racetrack. So Natalie finds himself in the lead, and Hetrick is up to second. It has been a wild day here in Pennsylvania. And the only rider who has really been able to avoid the crashes, the off track excursions is Natalie. I don't know if he's the fastest guy here today, but he's been the most consistent. But look at the pressure being applied by Hetrick and Weenan. Downhill they go. This is one of the most treacherous off cambers of all this track. Almost sharply off to the right while you're turning to the left. Hetrick trying to not only stay on the track, but find running room to make the pass. It's a team battle right now. You got the two MotoWorks Can-Ams and the two Yamahas. Third and fourth trying to get around him, and this is the spot Hedrick likes. He takes over the number one spot and triples to boot. 
Unbelievable what this kid is able to do on this very comfortable, very familiar racetrack to him. And he begins to put the hammer down and get away. And Whedon has made the move on Natalie as well. Now the report is that Natalie feeling a little bit under the weather today. He was able to dig deep, hold off Thomas Brown and win Moto 1. But here in Moto 2, Hedrick and Whedon are back with a vengeance. And don't forget about Upperman. Upperman apparently went off the track while leading, quickly lost some ground. We'll see if he can fire back. Although I don't know if anyone's going to have anything for Hetrick, who is just letting it all hang out. It's a high risk, high reward situation for the kid. And so far it's paying off. It didn't in Moto 1. He led early, he had problems. He was able to salvage top five. I don't think he's close enough to win the overall today when you count both motos, but still Moto wins. They pay big points. They probably pay some bonus money. So the kid's gonna go for it. And that is spectacular to watch him clear that uphill triple and throw the machine sideways. Still close between Wien and Natalie and Brown in second, third, and fourth. If they can hook up and uh, move forward together, they might have something for the kid. It might come down to endurance. Is Hedrick going to be able to run this type of torrid pace all the way to the end? It looks to me like Wienan is starting to close up and try to put the pressure on. So we've still got a battle for the lead on our hands from High Point. Stay with us. Racer TV is brought to you by Can-Am and by Amsoil. Racer TV rages on on the NBC Sports Network. Jason Wygant giving him the call, and we have a new leader at High Point. Before we went to break, we were wondering how long could Joel Hetrick run that torrid pace and ride the thin line between risk and reward. Well, not all the way to the checkered flag. Chad Wienan was putting pressure on. Hetrick made a mistake, and now Wienan to the number one spot. Now, due to a third place finish in the first moto, Wienan still might not get today's overall victory. It could go to this man, John Natale, who won the first race. He is running second here in race two. And of course, a first and a second is going to beat a first and a third in the overall score for the weekend. And that means that Natale will make up just a few more points on Wienan for the day. And that's really the, the question. Can he continue to make up points and keep this championship close? Battle is on for third between Thomas Brown and Josh Upperman. Brown has been consistent all day. Upperman has been up and down literally. Crashed early in Moto 1. Went off the track early here in Moto 2. But he is really on a charge right now and is trying to put a move on Brown to the inside for that coveted last podium spot in this race. I don't think Natale has the stuff to go after Wienan in this second moto. Like we said, uh, the veteran feeling a little bit under the weather today, but he can definitely manage this race, manage this series, and he knows if he finishes second in this moto, it does not matter if Wienan wins it. Natale will be the day's overall winner, and that would be two in a row for the Iron Man. Wienan airing it out. And this has been the trouble for Wienan the last couple of years. He has gotten into the points lead time and time again. He often wins early in the series. There have been other years where he's rallied late. But regardless, it seems like every year there's a bad race or two that spoils his championship party. And that problem in the first moto definitely was the potential uh, for that today. He was able to bounce back, salvage some points, Pulling off a moto win here, he will minimize the damage. And we know full well, you win the championships on your bad days. You've got to be able to salvage as many points as possible when the luck is not rolling your way. And that's what Wienan has done. He's not going to win the overall, but he's going to be very happy to have minimized the damage. One lap to go. And Natalie just digging deep. He got to figure that the fans back there are helping him. Got a lot of family here in Pennsylvania rooting for him. This battle for third still raging. Brown back in front of Upperman. And that would also be for a top three overall as well. So Brown and Upperman very much motivated, as is this man. The big man from Galena, Illinois, Chad Wienan. Going to win this moto. Look at the gap he has over Natalie. It's about 12 seconds, so Wienan is showing who's the boss right now 
as these two continue to duke it out. Upperman and Brown. Upperman going to the inside. Still wanting it here in the last lap. They're going to go downhill maybe faster than they have all day long. Dives to the inside. Brown able to cover it on the outside and covers it again. Great racing down the stretch for third in this race. And I think Brown might have Upperman covered. He's got about three quad lengths as we head uphill for the last time. Meanwhile, checker flag coming out, and it's coming out for the number 44 of Chad Weenan, who bounces back big and wins Moto2 at high point. But the real star of the show, it's going to be two overall wins in a row for the Ironman, John Natale. And a fantastic race for third. Brown holds off Upperman. Hetrick, with his problems, recovers to finish in fifth. So a big day. We knew it would be pivotal for the championship, and both these guys showed the mental toughness. The Can-Am turning point, well, it was the crash in Moto1. Good starts for the Can-Ams of Natale and Hetrick. Bad starts for Upperman and Weenan, who came together, and that set the tone for the day. Natale, without his best stuff, feeling under the weather, still wins Moto1, and hangs tough in Moto2 to snag the overall in front of a big crowd. Thanks for watching and congratulations to John Natale.